Hi, everybody. My name's Davey, and I'm your host for Rocky Mountain Rankings. And today we're going to be discussing Megadeth. <laughs> I am sorry, everybody. Oh, I've been watching uh, Sling Blade. bits and pieces of the movie, and uh, I've never seen the whole movie, but, uh, yeah. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Morton, is that his name? Can't think of his name, <laughs> but anyway, we won't go. I won't go into that. Today, on Rocky Mountain Rankings, we're going to be discussing album art from a particular band that started out in 1983 I believe uh, and that band well let's put it this way if a certain person hadn't got fired by a certain band we would never never have got all this great music that certain band being Metallica and that certain person that was fired, Dave Mustaine. Uh, you know, doesn't I don't think I need to say it again, but the way Metallica went about getting rid of him, you know, having traipsed all the way across this country, 3,000 miles to New York, going to be fired and sent back across the country. No, that's not right. Uh, that's one of my sticky points with Metallica. Don't get me wrong, I still like Metallica's music, though not some of the later stuff. I do kind of like the new one, the new album. But, you know, to... Take somebody, well, it's akin to saying, telling somebody, oh, guess what? We're going on a cruise. Okay, you want to go? Yeah, sure, okay. Trapesing all the way to Miami or whatever and uh, just getting ready to board the ship and uh, going, well, sorry, you're not going with us. You're not coming with us. Hit the road. That's uh, what it's, you know, Basically, what Metallica did to Dave Mustaine. But as far as I'm concerned, they did Dave a big favor. They did the fans a big favor. Because if he'd remained in Metallica, we wouldn't have got all this excellent music by Megadeth. Uh, he would probably never have uh, met uh, David Elfson. Um, of course, there's another story right there with uh, Dave Olson, but I won't get into that. That's uh, that's a big conglomeration of crap that uh, I'm not too happy with Dave Mustaine. You know about? Are you listening, Dave? Uh, but anyway, we're here to discuss the album art by Megadeth. 15 albums. We're not, I'm not going to include their current album because I haven't got a physical copy of it. I was going to you know, bring it up on my phone, but I thought, no, we'll just do the 15 that I have. Uh, though the, the new album is good. Uh, it's still, I'm still, well, let's put this, the jury still out on that one. Uh, whether it's going to stick with me or not. So, anyway, start with my list, least favorite album art and work all the way to my, my favorite. And I got to tell you, this was really tough. Really tough because though there's some weak album art here. 
it is all great album art. There's, there's not a stupid album cover here, as far as I'm concerned. There might be something that you don't like or absolutely loathe here, but and if there is, put it down below. You know, rank, leave your own ranking of the album art down below. I'd be interested to see it. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and like the video, by the way. It all helps my channel out. So, but anyway, let's get into this, shall we? Okay, start out with number 15. An album that was released August 31st, 1999. And had a different, totally different co cover. In fact, I didn't know this until I bought it up here. Um, to tell you the truth, I'm glad they, I didn't get the album with this cover that I'm looking at. It's basically, well, let's get, let's get into what the name of the band, the album is. Yeah, the name, we didn't, we know the name of the band, Davies, what the hell. The album is Risk. Now, I know a lot of you are probably going, oh, that album sucks. Yeah, different album. Totally different sound. But I still like it. In fact, I think I put this in my top 10 in the ranking of the music. But anyway... The album cover's not the best, but it doesn't suck as much as what would have, you know, the other album cover that they have here, which is just Mega Death, which not even the, the logo like that. It's just like a brand onto some piece of a piece of wood, which is I think a mouse trap, and it's got the little. Uh, trigger latch. Yeah, that would have, that would definitely have been stupid <laughs> if I would have had that. But this, you know, it, it conveys what the title says. You know, risk. There's always a risk. Risk of everything. Risk of this mouse getting trapped. And the, of course, you got the kitty there. And go ahead, go ahead. Get in the trap if you don't come out. But, you know, it's a weak cover, but it's not stupid in any shape or form. So that's my number 15. Uh, but like I was saying, the, the critic, or, well, the fans weren't uh, kind to of this album. Uh, the producer, say who produced this? Oh, Dave, Dave Mustaine. Uh, I think Ralph Hatlin. was responsible for the for the way it sounded. Let's see here. Produced by oh. No, Dan Huff. That's it. Yeah, Dan Huff. Okay. Oh, all right. I'm like, the 2004 reissue was produced by Dave Mustaine. Originally, it was produced by Dan Huff. That's who. It, yeah. And he was also the producer of the previous album, uh, Cryptic Writings. Um. Uh, and he was, from what I understand, he was trying to. He was. Just pulling the band to get them more radio friendly, which uh, you don't do with a band like Metallica, or yeah, Metallica, Megadeth, or Metallica for that instance. You don't do that. You, you end up taking some place where they don't belong. And that's where they were headed here. Though, like I said, the... Music's great. The album cover's good. So don't get me wrong. So that's my number 15. On to number 14. 
Okay. Released September 14th, 2004. Album that's okay. And the album cover again. Like I said, there's not any stupid album covers here. So there are a couple. There, there was a potential for that. There was originally. We'll get into that later. But coming in at number 14 is this one. The system has failed. Good album, great, good cover. I mean, but this one, it just, again, not in my top five or my top ten. But still, not a stupid album cover. And if you don't, you know, if you're familiar with uh, Megadeth, you know what I'm talking about. You know, it's, it's really tough. Uh, it's really tough uh, deciding what's going to be the best, what's not going to be the best. Uh, there was an alternate cover for this, and it was this this right here, the uh, Vic Rattlehead and Flames, which uh, I don't know if I prefer that over this one or not either way not stupid just weak <laughs> just weak cover uh good music again um but i can't where i i rank this in my uh, music rankings but anyway that's my number 14 the system has failed Okay, for number 13, we're going out do we, a little, all the way back, all the way back to the beginning. At least June 12th, 1985. The very first album from Megadeth. Killing is my business and business is good. Now, this is not the original cover. The original cover, if they, if, that had been on there and said this would have uh, definitely been dead last in uh, this ranking. Uh, it would have uh, replaced risk <laughs> at number 15. Uh, just was Bick Rattlehead skull on some chain and a candle and some other stuff. I can't tell what it is. Uh, the logo, of course, totally different. I'm glad they uh, changed it for this. This, you know, though not a strong cover, better than that one. And I believe Dave... Did not have any kind words for that album cover, <laughs> that original one. So, of course, it was Combat Records that put it out. And I'm sure they're, you know, a small label. You only have so much money you can throw around. So, anyway, good, good album, though uh, not my favorite. I don't reach for it as much. As I do others, but still a good a good debut. Though this next album would would uh, put them on the map. This one would get their foot in the door. The next one would put the foot. Uh, yeah, P cells would put their foot uh, their would put them on the map. <laughs> so anyway, that's number thirteen. On to number twelve. Okay, my number 12 here, uh, released June 4th, 2013. This album cover is completely, completely different from anything that's come before. Um, I was, I almost put this number 15, but 
I do kind of like it a little bit better than what's come before it. Of course, that's Super Collider. I remember when I first saw this album cover, I thought it was a, a eyeball. I guess it could be <laughs> if you didn't if you didn't know it was a Super Collider. Um, whatever I what do they call those things? Where they smash neutrons and protons or whatever, or asteroids. They can smash their heads as far as I'm concerned. Uh, back, of the cover, back cover is pretty good. I like that one. I like back cover. Better view. It's not as shiny. Big old robot. I like the cover on the disc. But well, that's, yeah, that's Big Rattlehead as a robot. I think that is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, David Draymond performed. Uh, did a guest vocal on uh, Dance in the Rain on this album. But anyway, good album. Not their best. Though I do love, I love uh, their cover of Cold Sweat, the Thin Lizzy tune. That is just awesome. They kept the core of the song intact. It was just, and put a little bit more power into it. So Thin Lizzy's version of Cold Sweat's just awesome too. So anyway, that's my number 12, Super Collider. Again, not str a strong cover, but definitely not stupid. Okay, number 11. Uh, this album cover... I really struggle with because it's well. I wa I was going to put it my uh, dead last, but at the same time, I still uh, it's one of those covers that you like, but sometimes it just bugs the heck out of you. <laughs> the album uh, was released May fifteenth, two thousand one. Called the world needs a hero. Uh, yeah, heart back to Alien. Vic Rattlehead, the alien coming out of uh, the chest. Not stupid, but still, you know, it. Like I said, I could have put this dead last too. But I still kind of like it, you know. Like I said, it's one of those albums that, hell, like certain songs. Some days you can listen to it, some days you can't. Some days you can, I can look at this album cover. Some days I just want to toss it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, good album. Return to form after Risk on that one. So that was my number... Yeah, number 11. Okay, now we're at the top 10. Okay. Released June 17th, 1997. Would you like a little, do a little writing, my pretty? Cryptic writings. Yes. Cryptic writings. Uh, not the original cover. This one is good, a good cover. The original cover was gray with uh, Megadeth around right here instead of up here and Cryptic, cryptic Rising down below here. Basically the same scenario here except gray background. 
Uh, no. That gray background and with Megadeth being around that, that you know, no. That would have been a stupid cover. Stupid cover. Stupid. This one's a smart cover. So not strong, uh, uh, you know, to what's to come. It's still a good cover. Good music. Uh, this is, of course, uh, produced by Dan Huff, who's responsible for Risk. Uh, him trying to push Megadeth into more friendly, friendly radio-friendly waters. Um, though this album, I, I really do love. Really, did, uh, really do like this album, um, but I almost get a sense that Dave and Dan Huff were probably butting heads on how, what the sound should be, and and so on. And uh, as far as the, co the great co background cover, I mean, it just I'm glad they didn't go with. I'm glad that that's not on this album. <laughs> this one I bought. That that one really sucks. Um, see, it's a voodoo sign actually. Oh, the original title. Was going to be needles and pins. <laughs> uh, needles and pins. Megadeth. Needles and pins. Uh, no. Uh, Trevor was supposed to be a girl holding up a cupie with a bunch of pins in it. A cupie doll with a bunch of pins in it. Uh, I'm glad they didn't go. I'm glad they didn't go with that one. Okay, and the, according to this, the first 500,000 copies of Cryptic Rise in the United States were released with the silver background. Uh, I'm glad they. I'm glad they changed the the black black background and I'm glad I didn't go with needles and pins um, that almost sounds like a, a title left for a Lady Gaga uh, album there's Lady Gaga needles and pins you know maybe I need to do a ranking of album titles that sounds like an idea, doesn't it? So anyway, that's my number 10, Cryptic Writings. Thank heaven they didn't go with Nielsen Pence. Onward we go. Okay, number nine, released July 14th, 1992. Uh, now I'm from a period that I want to say the Megadeth was moving from a thrash band to more of a dedicated heavy metal band. Just a pure heavy metal band. Album is Countdown to Extinction. Um, good cover. Though, why well, they went with some old guy floating in midair, I don't know, but still, it's not all right. It's not bad. Um, you know, though, when I see this, when, well, in fact, when I fir first saw this album cover, what came to mind was Metallica's uh, The Unforgiven, song The Unforgiven. 
And in that, if you recall the video, they had uh, so, uh, this boy's in a, a room by himself and he's getting older and older and he ends up an old man. So when I saw this, I'm like, hmm, interesting. So, I don't know. There's Vic on the back. Even though when he's not on the cover, he's not far, far behind or far away. Uh, and this album, good, though not one of their one of their best, but it's show it shows Megadeth moving to the eight or the nineties from the eighties to nineties. So that's my number nine. My number niner. On the number eighter. Which is, oddly enough, the follow up to Countdown to Extinction, released November 1st, 1994, Euthanasia. Good album cover, though, of course, there's, like I said, there. When Vic's not in the cover, he's not far behind. <laughs> I remember when I first saw this, I'm like, interesting. Totally different. Uh, of course, I can't help but wonder if the, at this point in time, maybe uh, Dave and the boys were trying to get past Vic Rattlehead. Because, you know, he had your... Bands with mascots, you know, you had Iron, you got Iron Maiden with uh, um, oh, Ed, Eddie, yeah, God. Eddie, you know, and then he had uh, Halloween. That was when they started out. They they had uh, uh, Fang Face. Of course, they quickly ditched that because uh, they didn't want the cop, you know. See as copying somebody. Whereas then you have Megadeth with Vic Rattlehead. And who knows? Maybe they're trying to distance themselves from him. But like I said, he's there. He is. He's still there. Uh, I believe they got some flack for this album cover. Uh, No, it's supposed to be uh, part of the line on the title track. Where we've all been hung out to dry. <laughs> uh, but I can see people seeing this and actually taking it literally like, oh, how dare they hang babies from lines? You know, they should be strung up themselves. Who knows? You know, can't you see that? People take, think that's actually real. Good, but great artwork though. It's excellent. Cute little babies though. <laughs> you would no. No, you 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 really would not want to do that for real. <laughs> I'm sorry. That would I would be one of the first to hunt you down if you actually did something like that for real. Give me a break. So but anyway, that's my number eight, euthanasia. On to number seven. All right, number seven here, released November 1st, 2011, 13, 13th album, and I believe, I want to say this is first with, uh, yeah, this is David Elson's return as basis for Mega Death. Uh, again, this album I struggle with, you know. It's okay. The album cover's good. But again, I, I don't know. It's another album that I look at. Do I like it or don't I like it? But it's Again, it's not a stupid album, by 
by no means. And I liked what they did with the the title. Put the three in there and a one, a one, you know, the number in the in there. One is the I and the three is the E, even though it's backwards. <laughs> or have you seen backwards uh letters and numbers before, huh? But anyway, good album. Uh good return for Dave Olson. That's my number seven. It's number seven thirteen. Okay, I was just thinking. Uh, good thing they didn't come out with an album called Eleven. Seven Eleven. <laughs> okay. Released September fifteenth, two thousand nine. Is. Endgame. I kind of this cover is really interesting. I mean, it's really a good, awesome cover. And again, I was uh, struggled. This could have moved up, but I think what is still to come is just a tad stronger than that cover. So this, by no means, sucks. Uh, Dave on the back. I don't know why he didn't have a whole band with him? I have no idea. So anyway, that is my number number six. <laughs> kind of lose count after a while. So anyway. On to number five, the top five at five. All right. Released January 22nd, 2016. An album that, well, they put out right before Dave started, you know, had his throat concerns and all that. Um, it got kind of scary there, you know. Would Dave lose his voice? Would he have to dis, uh, disband, you know? I don't know. But anyway, he came out with this little gem, Dystopia. This album cover is just, well, it belongs in the top five, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, though, Endgame, I was really struggling. I almost put Endgame as my number five, but I think I'd like this a little bit better. Probably because it has Vic Rattlehead on the cover where he belongs. And kind of gives you a futuristic, apocalyptic flavor here, which the whole album you know, has that flavor, the, the songs. So... Uh, I think this is the last one with Dave Elfson on, yeah. But anyway, great album cover. With potential of some name moving up, who knows? So anyway, on to number four. Okay, this album is revered among mega deathers. Has that ever been used before? Mega deathers? <laughs> I'm a mega deather. Of course, we're talking about rust in peace. Rust in peace, my dear friends. He's resting in peace. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people really love this album. Um, I remember when I first got this, I didn't know, let me put it this way, I didn't like it at first. I listened to it, I thought, I mean, totally different from what came before. And that's, of course, so 
so far so good, so what? Uh, more, less thrash, more heavy metal. But as of late, I've really enjoyed this album. Though that, that's, it's really short, you know, 40 minutes. Of course, when this came out, I mean, uh, I believe uh, CDs were just becoming all the rage, had just become all the rage, you know, and it, it was still relatively new concept. Uh, but anyway, great album cover. By no means a stinker whatsoever. I mean, it's just fantastic. And I believe, yeah, in fact, this was my the third album I got from Megadeth. My first, my third purchase from them. The first one being Peace Cells. The second one, uh, so far, so good. And then this one. So, um, anyway, check it out. Great album. We're on to number three. Okay, number three is well, was my is my number one all time favorite Megadeth album. When I ranked number one in my album rankings. They heard though it is number three for the cover, and that is so far so good. So what? Now, when I purchased this originally on cassette, because I wanted to hear it right away, I wanted it. I couldn't, because back then you had cassette players in trucks. You didn't have CD players. They had had yet to come out. Uh, of course, I, you know, CDs were, I think, four or five years old by then, by now, when this came out. So, but great cover. And like I said, my all time favorite Megadeth. I, I, when I got this on cassette, I listened the hell out of this. I just, awesome. You know, it opens with Into the Lungs of Hell, followed by Set the World to Fire. Just awesome. So, um, I think a lot of people didn't like the cover. But anyway, I do. Though, I think what's Yet to come is just a little bit stronger. So that's my number three. On to the top two. Okay. Now, for you who are mega deathers, you know what my top two are. You don't know how I got them, though, how they got them, I have them placed. Uh, I've said it before and I say it again, this is really tough. Really tough. Um, but this is how, you know, I feel. You may disagree with how I've got these, these covers placed. But that's you, this is me. And oddly enough, my number two is my number two in the album's ranking. And that is peace sells, but who's buying? First album I bought by Megadeth. I remember I've seen this cover. I'm like, wow, what is this? I didn't know who, I had no idea who Dave Mustaine was, that he'd been in uh, Metallica. Um, but I was just captivated by the cover. Um, of course, I've seen this picture 
right or this picture right here <laughs> it was you know on the original cover of the album i bought a uh, vinyl i didn't buy a cd but that cover was just the cover is what sold it to me but i seen the the guys on the back and i'm like geez who are these who are these stoops <laughs> i did um, especially Gar, Gar Samuelson. He just was like, he would uh, sooner pound you in the ground than look at you in that picture. But I remember taking it home, putting it on, and I was shocked by what I heard, heard coming out. I was just, I didn't know how to take it. I didn't like it at first. I didn't. I, I'll, I'll admit that up front. I did not like what I was hearing. Um, but then, So Far So Good came out. I decided to give that a listen because it, again, the cover intrigued me. And I thought, wow, this is awesome. So I went back and listened to this again and it just, it is. Great album, great cover. And this goes to show you, if you put something out in a good, with good art, good cover, you're going to you're gonna treat people. You're going to get them to buy your stuff. Of course, whether or not they'll like the stuff inside, that's, you know, depends on how well you put, you, you know, you, you're at your, you are at your craft. So, anyway, that's my number two. And, of course... You know what my number one, and you're probably going, good grief. How can you put that abomination at number one? Well, I can. United Abominations. I do. I love this cover. I love the whole thing. The back cover. Um, what's going on inside. Of course, there's the boys but you got all this cool artwork inside I just I mean that could have been the cover gatefold cover you know you could say well it's Vic Rattlehead before you uh when he's still still among the living <laughs> But I do. I think that's awesome, an awesome cover. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, the album itself, music, good. Not the best, but it's still great. Good music. But just an awesome cover. So, And that's my number one, and I'm sticking with it. If you don't like it, tough. Oh, it was released May 15th, 2007, by the way. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, my 15, or the album covers of Megadeth ranked. I'm sticking with it. If you don't like it, tough. You know, number one. Nine Abominations, number two, Peace Cells, number three, So Far So Good, So What, number four, Rust in Peace, number five, Dystopia, number six, End Game, number seven, 13, number eight, Euthanasia, number nine, Countdown to Destruction, or Countdown to Extinction. <laughs> I knew I was going to say that eventually. I keep I, I was doing that earlier. The Countdown, okay, what's going to be number nine? Countdown to ex ex Destruction, or I mean, okay. Extinction, Extinction, not Destruction. Okay, number 10, 
cryptic writings, voodoo, Mua. Number 11, the world needs a hero. The world needs an alien popping out of your stomach or your chest. Number 12, super collider. Number 13, killing is my business, killing is my business and business has been damn good. Number 14, the system has failed. And number 15, are you ready to take a risk, buddy? Are you? Uh, of course, the new album, where would I put that? Good cover. Probably in my, at least my top 10. So. But... Like I said, I was going to include it, but I didn't want to bring it up on my phone. I don't know. So. Do this again, maybe a couple of years from now. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. So, anyway, there you have it. The album covers art rank for Metallica. Or, yeah. Megadeth. You gad. <laughs> I hope your week goes great. I hope your weekend was great. Next, we're coming up on uh, Memorial Day weekend here in the United States. Three days off. Hallelujah. Though I get a replace a pipe in my driveway this weekend. I'm, well, maybe it depends on how much it depends on how much the pri uh, the pipe is. Uh, my cousin saying five hundred dollars. I don't know if I want to spend five hundred dollars, but it's gonna eventually be done. Either that or I'm gonna back out one day and my truck is gonna take a dive to the right. So anyway, leave your own uh, ranking of the album covers down below. I'd be interested to see it. And uh, please subscribe, like the video, hit the notification bell. And uh, we will see you uh, in a couple of weeks with another Rocky Mountain Rankings. Have a good one.